All right, hello. Welcome to welcome to small group this week, everyone. Now listen, we've been in this series, Heaven and Hell, and uh, what I'm experiencing in my small group, uh, maybe what you're experiencing in your small group is lively, in-depth, uh, all kinds of crazy questions that I love this series because it's making us do the thing that David wrote. David said, I delight in the law of the Lord. I meditate on it day and night. And I think we're all just thinking about eternity more. I think we're concentrating on who Jesus is more. I think we're concentrating on lost people more. I think this is putting us as a church on mission more because we are talking about these big things, life things on Sunday. And then throughout the week, whatever your small group meets, we're bringing it back up. And that's going to happen again this week. Uh, we're so excited to have Mark Moore. Mark Moore uh, has been a, such a great part of this church for a long time. And he preached on Sunday about Revelation chapter 20, chapter 21, 22. And he said, Johnny, do you want me to take on Revelation? And I said, yes, Mark. I want you to take on Revelation because I know it's going to be fun. Now, some of the content that we covered on Sunday in our main teaching time is a little bit redundant because those questions were brought up in Luke chapter 16, which we'll really concentrate on. And there's some redundancy in Matthew 25 which we concentrated on. But I felt like it's it's a really good place for us to be here on this week because not everyone's been here for the whole journey. We got some new people on. Maybe you missed a week. And plus Mark's fervor for this topic is going to shed new light on it as we talk about heaven as described through John's vision on the island of Patmos when he's caught up and he sees a vision of heaven and he describes to us what heaven's about. Okay, now... Um, if we've been in this series for a while and you're like, Johnny never talked about end times and you're all mad at me. One, give me grace because I want to talk about what Jesus thought was most important. And when Jesus talked about end times, we have, we have like zeroed in on Jesus's content for end times. We've not talked a lot about, about John's content for end times. And it is important for the church and we do need to be aware, but his main purpose was so that we have hope. We have, that, we, that we don't live our lives wondering what it will be like. I think it's more important what it will be like than when. I think when is the wrong question. Because it's not if, but when. It will happen. Being ready is where Jesus concentrates on. And then John gives us all this hope about how beautiful it is. So you're going to read through again the night small group. Um, Summon Revelation. And I know we just talked about it on Sunday. That was great. But we're just going to read through it in a chunk and then have some questions to really once again go over. Like, why do we believe what we believe? It's rooted in Scripture all the way back to John. And I'm real excited for you guys to have this conversation. But I, I want to tease something just a little bit. One, we have one more week in this series. And um, on our podcast so that Jim and I do together, I am going to talk a little bit about what I believe about the end times. And, you know, I love to talk about these things because they're in the Word of God. And so many of you are my dear friends and you disagree with me. And I just like that even more because truth be told, when we get to heaven, if I find out you guys are all right and I was wrong about the end times, I'm going to say, nope, sorry. It's great to be here, right? Um, but we're, Jen and I are going to talk about, um, you know, tribulation things of that nature uh end times on our last episode of heaven and hell podcast so if you haven't seen any of those and you just want to watch jennifer and i argue about the bible it's fun it's a fun time for everybody uh you can check that out uh, i believe the link is in the small group leaders email content this week one other thing i want to just tease us about the small groups if you've been coming and god's growing uh we did this we just invited some new people to our small group um, just to, you know, we want, we want big, we want our small groups to get so big that we have to start looking around the room asking this question, who is God asking to lead? Is God asking you to facilitate in your small group, to love some people, to say, I'll go out. Hey, will you go with me? So here's what's going to happen. Some people in your small group right now are being called to go and be the main facilitator. And then someone in your small group right now is being called to go with them because Jesus never sent anyone out alone. That's what's so great about when Jesus sends out people, he sends them out in twos. He sends them out in groups. Don't go out alone. You know, you go out alone in the wilderness to be tempted and, you know, like, don't do that, right? You know, don't do it. Take some people with you. Take some folks with you and start a new small group. 
And the best way to do that is make your, your current small group so big that someone has to leave. There's no more room on the couch, right? There's no more carpet to pull up, right? There's already no room on our couch. Couch. We got all the chairs from the kitchen, all the chairs from the dining room, and, and, and two kids' chairs, right? That's how we're rolling in the Scott small group because we're going we're to do it too. We're going to send some people out because there's so many folks that need to be in. Now, I want to tease you with this has been a great series. And some of us are so sad that it's not, if, if you've not gotten Randy Alcorn's book on heaven, get that. There's some other great books uh, that you can read more about this subject. It doesn't mean we're done thinking about these things, but we're going to go to a theme now that's going to lead us up to Easter. And I'm so excited. So I want you guys in small group to be excited as well. It's Jesus that's like the main thing, you know, the main picture. Go figure, we're church. Jesus, but the subscript is like, pulls me in. The subscript is, what did Jesus not say? What are the things Jesus didn't say? And I've got some messages in here that are just like percolating in my heart because sometimes we learn as much from the greatest teacher that ever lived about what he didn't say in some moments. This is going to stretch us all. And once again, we're going to see how beautiful Jesus is. It's going to lead us into the Easter season. It's a great time to invite someone to small group. So don't stop. Let's keep it going. Let's keep getting around the Word of God. It says in the book of Acts, they devoted themselves daily to the teaching of the apostles. And God added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is a description. Meeting in homes, meeting here on the church campus, meeting around a cup of coffee with other believers Around the Word of God is how the church grows. It's how you grow. It's how life changes. So I want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, be with our small group. Um, time, it's always a blessing. Would you be answering prayers in our small group that just help everyone know our God is alive, our God is moving, our God is real. Like we will have a God face off with you and any other false God in the world because you always show yourself to be true. You answer prayer. Do that in our small groups so that everyone knows. And Father God, be speaking to our hearts. Who, who is ready to go and lead? Who is ready to go and assist and facilitate so that more people can have this awesome experience? We love you, Jesus, and we look forward to having a great time in the Word right now. It's in your name we begin. Amen. Hey, friends, have a great time in the Word of God. Love you. See you soon.